All right, everyone, welcome. <clears throat> I hope everyone can uh, hear me here. Um, I believe my microphone is working. If you can't, just uh, if you can throw it out into the chat or the questions there. So welcome to our webinar. Uh, we're gonna get started in just a moment here. So uh, sit back, relax, and then uh, enjoy the show. All right, so we're gonna get started. Some others might uh, roll on in as we go, but uh, we're gonna get, get going here. All right. So today's seminar, we're going to start with a brief introduction of what our company is and what we do. And then we'll get to that good stuff, walleye. We'll be talking about what type walleye, uh, what type of fish walleye are, their seasonal patterns, where to find them, and some top presentation that catch fish all season long. So this is not just for summer, or spring, fall, it's, it's every uh, season of the year, including uh, hard water season. So a little bit about myself. I'm the one holding that beautiful lake trout, doing what I love best, fishing. The second thing I love best is getting out on the water, studying and learning all that I can about catching fish. Fish have always been my passion right from a young age. You can find myself on many of Manitoba's fishing hotspots. It is what ultimately drove me to my career path. After university, I did some work up north as a professional fishing guide, and let me tell you, the fishing was good. I was able to learn many tips and tricks from seasoned pros, as well as study fish behavior, which led me to my role at Clean Water Pro as the environmental operation manager in Carmen, Manitoba. You can see a picture of our storefront on the right-hand side there, as well as a little bit about our stock. So what does Clean Water Pro do? Well, Clean Water Pro is a water remediation company where we work largely with water councils, RMs, fish, and fisheries on remediating retention ponds, lagoons, drinking water cells, and lakes. But we also have a store where we sell environmentally friendly solutions for water quality issues for homeowners on their ponds, dugouts, and or lake and river shoreline properties. On top of that, we are an outlet for selling Manitoba fishing licenses, hunting licenses, and park passes, plus a small selection of tackle. So if you're ever in a pitch, give us a call and we'll try and accommodate you the best that we can. What are work entails, you might be wondering. Well, let me tell you. We provide a variety of services to meet our clients' needs. This typically includes assessments of water bodies, treatment plans, restoration, and monitoring. We also do research and assessments of fish habitat and health, as well as the health and provide recommendations on improving the fishery, restoration, and research. The size of water body can vary greatly and the intended use. These are some smaller homeowner water bodies that we deal with. The one on the left is a dugout that was used for recreation such as stock trout, swimming, and paddling. The pond on the top right is used for irrigating gardens, as well as it was used in the house for showering and their toilets. And the lower right is just a pond used for their cattle. We also do a lot of work with fisheries, particularly on lakes that experience winter kill and low oxygen conditions. We have industrial energy efficient aeration systems that we can install to ensure oxygen levels remain adequate all winter long. What we do is we can assess the lake and determine the needs and gaps and reverse some of the effects caused by runoff, et cetera, et cetera. Overall, the work we do is to can increase the productivity of the natural system, in turn creating a healthy habitat for all aquatic life and visitors to the water body. Here's a before and after, after just a few weeks of our restoration work. Now the moment that you've been waiting for, the good stuff. To start, let's talk about the biology of walleye. Walleye are a fish part of the Persidae family, otherwise known as in the perch family. Olive green to golden color and equipped with massive eyes, this predatory fish is perfectly suited for low light and turbid conditions. Highly sought after for the frying pan, when cooked up right, these fish produce a light and flaky taste that is irresistible. 
I got to say, it's one of my favorite fish to eat, and I eat a lot of fish. The best and recommended size to keep is between 14 and 20 inches long. Any larger will be of prime breeding size, plus they're not as tasty, and any smaller will be next generations and should be released the following year until they're ready for fielding size. Many lakes in Manitoba and across Canada do have special regulations or slot sizes restricting the allowable size that can be kept. However, it is encouraged for lakes that do not have these laws that the 14 to 20 inch rule is followed to keep a healthy, sustainable population for all to enjoy. Aside from good fun and eating, walleye can, be, can put up one heck of a fight. In fact, these prize wall fish can often reach sizes well over 28 inches and over 15 pounds. In fact, in 1998, the Manitoba record was set at 39 inches caught from the mighty Red River. Just like these powerhouses caught right here out of Manitoba waters. You may notice the coloration is slightly different than the previous images. And well, that's because these walleye are known as Manitoba greenbacks. When nutrient rich waters drain into Lake Winnipeg and surrounding tributaries, it makes the bait fish thrive, which in turn gives these walleye a boost in growth and size. I mean, just look at the bellies on these monsters. Although not a different species, the Manitoba greenback is native to Lake Winnipeg and its tributaries, giving the Lake Winnipeg fishery world class recognition in particular during the ice fishing season. Every year, many master angler walleyes are caught and released out of Lake Winnipeg. However, in such a massive lake, I believe many of you can be thinking, just like me, it can be intimidating on where to look to find these beauties. Well, I'll be explaining shortly the behavior patterns of walleye to better equip you the next time you plan to go out looking for that big one. But first, let me briefly explain and show you the difference between walleye and sauger, a commonly caught cousin often mistaken as a walleye. Many people have often caught sauger and assumed it was a walleye just to be proved wrong, I guess. Sauger have distinctive, distinctive dark blotches on their body, which varies in color. They also have different colorations on their fins and are typically much smaller than walleye. They can reach sizes up to about 18 inches. That's a pretty big sauger. They are related to walleye as being in the perch family and have a similar taste and can definitely be worth keeping. However, it is important to note that regulations in Manitoba at least allow for limits of four for conservation and six for sport licenses of either all walleye, all sauger, or a combination, a combination of both unless otherwise specified on certain lakes in the area. In other provinces and states, these very regulations may vary. I'm not 100% sure on what they are, but at least for Manitoba, that's what they are. Now that we know what to expect when we catch a walleye, the challenge is finding them. Walleye are a fish of habit and have been extensively researched for many years. What has been found is that walleye follow similar patterns due to the changing of seasons. To start, let's talk about the spring. Spring is when many animals have that exact two, uh, two things on their mind, food and repopulation. Walleye are no different. They leave the safety of deep waters and move towards spawning beds. If the option is available, walleye will hit, head inland up rivers and tributaries. But if they can't, Walleye will seek out shallow rock beds or reefs instead on a main lake. So when you're going out there, look for gravel and rock bottom areas of your lake or river and go shallow. This is the time of year walleye will be very shallow. I've often caught walleye with a jig and a minnow below my boat in three feet of water or less. Also, do not overlook turbid or stained water when locating walleye at this time of year these conditions can sometimes be the most bountiful. Spawning uses a lot of energy and will be draining on the fish. Post-spawn, there will be a resting period where the fish are not as active as they regain their energy. It's kind of this time of year right now, the fish are not quite as active. 
and you're hearing less and less being caught. However, at this time, if you use slower presentations that reflect their activity level, it is the best approach to entice a bite. I'll be explaining this a little bit more on in the presentation. However, once you, they've had a couple weeks to recover, the bite's back on with some of the hottest action of the year. The walleye will start to move towards deeper wa waters in the four to 10 foot range, typically located adjacent to deeper water. So what you're gonna be wanting to look for is hard bottom, sand and rock or emerging weed beds for the best producing action. The walleye will be aggressive at this time as well. So using aggressive action lures is the best approach to land many of these fish. I'll be talking a little bit later on about different lure types and what's aggressive and not aggressive. Moving into summer, the walleye migrate and spread out into deeper water. Covering ground is the best approach at this time. Time of day and structure the walleye are relating to will often be a key factor here. So look for deep channels next to active shallow waters with plenty of bait fish such as rock piles and humps are often where you're gonna be finding your summer walleye positioned. Take note of the depth when you catch that first walleye, because more often than not, there will be more walleye at that same depth in the surrounding area. Try fishing at that depth. If it slows down, go deeper. And again, cover lots of ground at this time. Trolling is key for summer walleye. Using less aggressive, slow presentations is also a good tip to have to make it easy for those lazier fish. So what I mean by that is typically bottom bouncing or you can troll some crankbaits. Moving into the fall, the walleye will be moving back to the shallow water and making rivers up front. Fall will be the most bountiful time to catch a prize walleye since the big females need adequate food source stores to produce eggs for the spring. This is a great time to be targeting the master angler walleye of a lifetime. They will be actively feeding in preparation for the winter and can be found in similar locations as the spring. This is because the vegetation dies off and the bait fish will be more on the move. Once the ice form, the walleye slow down. They will be suspended near deeper water. They are not aggressive about feeding. However, that does not mean that they won't eat. The walleye won't be far from bait fish to feed on. So move around drilling lots of holes until you find the spot. Try a variety of different presentations and different actions. Don't feel the need to commit to just one set of holes. Run and gun, drill holes adjacent to your area and lots of them. Work each and every single one of those holes and put a flasher down there until you can find some action. Work all the holes because 100 feet away could also be producing as well. If the bite slows down, begin the search by moving a few hundred feet away from where you were because the walleye won't have moved very far at that time. Alrighty, so now that we have the seasonal, seasonal patterns down, it's time to go over the playbook. What I've learned over my many years of fishing for walleye is there are two major rules of thumb to consider. Number one, if you ain't snagging, you ain't bragging. Majority of the time, walleye are almost always caught on the bottom. So get that lure down there and do not be afraid of snags. Any guide will tell you you won't catch nearly as many walleye unless you get that hook right to the bottom. There are gonna be times that you do catch fish mid-level, so it's always good to check the water column, but I would always start right on the bottom just to stir things up. In fact, with practice, you can knock your jig or lure on a rock to entice and bring the walleye over for a closer look. Number two, if you wanna catch a lot of quality walleye, go out on the water when nobody else wants to. What I mean by that is if it's raining or windy and is very miserable out and the last thing you wanna do is be going out on the water, that's gonna be when those walleye are biting. I learned this during my time as a guide. We would go out no matter the weather, whether high winds, rain or shine, the boats were out there. And the time that we were hauling in walleye after walleye for literal nonstop action, there was times that we would catch literally 200 walleye before noon. 
it was when it was windy and rainy. It was also because it was up north where there's a lot of walleye, but that was also a key factor. You may have heard of the term walleye chop. Well, this is what that's referring to. Years ago, I remember once being out on the boat trolling for pike when the wind started to pick up. After about an hour and a half, the lake was well stirred up and it was becoming harder and harder to control the boat. To make things, in quotation, worst, the action had stopped nearly completely for pike. But boy, let me tell you, the walleye were hitting on everything, even our big pike lures. We switched our tactics and caught our limit for our, the four of us in our boat in less than 30 minutes. At the time, I thought it was just the right time and right place, but knowing what I know now, it's clear it was the walleye chop. I do want to throw it out there. If you plan on going out in these conditions, make sure you remain safe and comfortable. Don't jump into a boat into three foot waves unless you've had experience driving in some rough conditions, not as bad as that. If you don't feel comfortable, consider fishing from store, shore. And because uh, you can catch those walleye, they're just a cast distance away. So on that note, let's talk about the game plan by introducing you to your new best friend, the wind. It's kind of funny. The wind is actually, in fact, very similar to my own best friend. The fact that he likes to stir things up, he can be a great help. He will change his direction frequently, and he's a huge pain in my ass. Fishing in the wind is definitely not an easy task, but the payoff can be huge when it comes to catching walleye. As shown in the graphics above for a good visual of how the wind will move the water and the fish, the wind will stir up the water, creating lower light and turbid conditions, exactly what the walleye thrive on. To start, if you notice on the top right, this is a great depiction of how walleye utilize wind that's blowing into a rock outcrop, shoreline, or other structure. So go with the wind. Look for these points of interest, cast a jig or spoon out along shore, or even vertically jig with a heavy weighted lure. Do hard rips with a controlled fall to simulate bait fish being thrown about in the water. To control your boat, if you do not have a troll, uh, bow mount trolling motor, posi position the back against the wind and put the motor in reverse. Play with your trim and speed until you're nearly stationary or slowly working away from the shore. Expect to take on some water until you get this thing down. It does take practice, but by doing this, uh, you'll work the area and be able to catch the fish utilizing this point of interest. Now the opposite is working with the wind as it blows bait fish held up in weed lines. So you can notice on the bottom left hand side there. Use a similar tactic, just look for that weed growth, position your boat and get that lure down there working backwards towards the shore. Now let's talk a little bit about current. Similar to wind, it's a huge friend in the quest to catch more quality walleye. In deeper, bigger lakes, as depicted in the top pictures, you will find current on mid-lake, humps, reefs, etc. Position your boat above the current and cast or troll adjacent to these hold points. For rivers, it's a lot easier to see and understand current. As depicted below, current will flow in one direction and the fish will be just outside relating to the eddies. They do this to catch bait fish when they get thrown off course. Cast into these areas with a jig, small spoon, or crank, and you'll almost definitely catch a walleye. However, don't be surprised to catch other species, though, well, since they can be stacked with pike, trout, trophy-sized suckers, and trophy-sized catfish. Finally, let's talk about lures. Walleye will hit on a variety of lure presentations. Like I had mentioned previously, I even caught them on big pike lures, such as big bulldogs and suix. The first tip that applies to all these lures is to tie your lure to about a two to three foot piece of 12 pound fluorocarbon. This is exactly the way to create a clean, invisible presentation so those skittish walleye will even bite. 
Plus, it offer, offers better protection if a pike comes along. I know how many times I have had my lure bitten off when I was tied straight to braid because of pike's teeth. Use a double uni knot to tie your fluorocarbon directly onto 10 pound braided line and you'll be set for the entire open water season and hard water season. The next tip is try switching it up until you find what works and what they're biting on. Once you can bind all the previous knowledge I have mentioned, all that is left is to deliver the ultimate presentation. Change up your lures, color, action, tactics until you find out what is working for today. New and different will entice those walleye to bite. For instance, I was once out ice fishing in the middle of the season and I could not get a bite on the normal go-tos for that lake. What I had with me to experiment with, meant with that day is I had gotten my hands on some beautiful live night crawlers. So I slapped that on a jig, threw it down my hole, and what do you know, it worked. Maybe it was the luck of the draw, but based on me being the only one catching in the tent, it was likely from the night crawlers as walleye normally would only get that in the summer. All right, so now on to the lures and presentations. The first two are usable in open water and hard water season. The last are for strictly open water. I wouldn't try putting a bottom bouncer down an ice hole. To start, a classic jig and minnow with a, a worm or plastic is also a great option for catching walleye. Using the tactics mentioned previously, it can be cast out and bounced back towards you from the boat or shore, getting that hook all the way down to the bottom. Or it can be jigged vertically over a holding point. This is what you would be doing in the winter, or you can also do it from a boat. They are inexpensive and will get the job done. Do not be afraid to lose your jig. Remember, if you ain't snagging, you ain't bragging. Make sure the presentation is clean and replicates the bait that you are feeding on. That might mean keeping the jig or bait horizontal, or it could mean have to be loose. Think of whatever it is that you're trying to replicate and what it would try and look like naturally. If you don't get a bite and you know there's fish down there, change up the color until you find what works. Particularly this could be used in early spring, late fall, and all winter long. I don't have nearly as much luck with it in the middle of the summer because of what I mentioned earlier about covering ground. So the next lure is a ripping wrap or a rattle bait, which is another great year-round option using to be vertically jigged with a large rip and a controlled fall. What I mean by a large rip is you take about about two feet of ripping it up towards the sky hard and then that control fall is you just let it slowly go back down. This is a good bait of choice to catch active aggressive fish. It also works great in the hard water season. I often find that the rattle will be will actually bring in curious fish to come and take a look at it, and they'll hit on the dead stick and jig and minnow instead of the hole adjacent to it. So I don't normally catch a lot on a rattle bait, but it definitely does bring fish in when you can see it light up on your flasher or fish finder. You can try changing your actions from large or small rips and do bucking bronco. Bucking bronco is just on the spot where you're almost tapping it. Change up your frequency of the rips until you find what's working. The next lure of choice is crankbaits. And they are used mostly in the summer. However, they are an effective choice for post late spawn walleye and in the fall. You can try it earlier on, but you'll probably get snagged a lot in that shallow water. I would use a jig at that time instead. They will come in a variety of different sizes and can be run at different depth levels. Cast towards shore or troll to cover ground and the lip size and speed of that you troll will determine the depth that you they travel at. I would go no faster than three to 3.5 miles per hour when you're trolling for, for walleye. That's a really fast troll and that would only get you some aggressive walleye. 
And at this time of year with the summer, walleye are not nearly as aggressive as what they should be in the fall. And don't be afraid to let that crankbait smack the bottom while trolling on a sandbar. The next is a classic bottom bouncer and spinner. With a nightcrawler or minnow baited on this hook, this tactic works well in, from spring all the way th through fall and has produced countless catches over the years. Experiment with the colors by starting with uh, multiple colors if you have others in the boat and eventually finding the color of choice. Some of the main colors usually are pink or white, sometimes uh, green or chartreuse is what's really good too, but definitely switch it up and uh, just keep, keep at it until you actually find some action or get a bite. If you troll at a speed around two miles per hour, generally I, I would go about 1.5 to two miles per hour. That's going to produce your ultimate action. And this presentation is good for your slower but active feeding walleyes. So they're not super aggressive at this time. They're going to be a little bit slower, but they need that. They like that enticing movement of the spinner. So finally, the last lure of choice is one that you may be unfamiliar with and that is the slow death hook. Similar to a bottom bouncer, this simple setup, and when I say simple, I mean it's literally a hook and line, will catch walleye and has been kept a secret among tournament anglers for years. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna snell a six, feet, six foot piece of fluorocarbon line to a single slow death hook, which you can buy at any of your local stores, including Clean Water Pro, and you're gonna tie the other end to a swivel and attach that to your bottom bouncer and troll at a speed less than 0.8 miles per hour or slower. So when I say slow, you're gonna be just creeping along. What sometimes what I do is I just let the wind kind of drift me along. I don't even use the motor at all when I'm doing this method. Uh, once you bait the hook, you wanna be bait, baiting the hook so that the night crawler covers the shank completely, and you wanna leave about a one inch till, leaving the hook exposed. Uh, I wouldn't use anything other than a night crawler for this presentation. Um, I've tried it with leeches, it doesn't really work. They kind of move around too much and minnows will not produce the right action. Because if this is done properly, the worm will swirl in a figure eight pattern, which is irresistible to walleye. This presentation is for those inactive walleye that cannot help but pass up an easy enticing meal. If the ev action ever stops, switch to the slow death hook and get the net ready, you will not regret it. And that's it for me. If there's any questions, feel free to let me know. I hope that you've enjoyed today's seminar and have learned a thing or two. Stay tuned for more fishing webinars to come and tight lines, folks.